Transmitting final briefing. As of now, Airborne Squad 7 will exterminate the Alpha Nativas occupying District 3. Their objective is the capture or dispatchment of the Elder Nativa. Pods entering atmosphere. One minute until threshold is reached. Seven five three one. Pod landing complete. Removing physical shield. Opening hatch. The hatch. Come on. Come on. Tucky. Eve, are you all right? This place is dangerous. Take my hand.
Are you all right, Eve? Uh, my body frame. Take this. It's first aid. Thank you. There's more of them. We haven't completed our mission. Now it's just up to us to see this mission through. Understand? Even better than during training. You were all together. But then... <laughs> the damage to your body frame is serious. We have to find the supply camp.
Wait, Eve. I hear something. Eve! Eve, are you all right? Get out of here. It's quiet. Still, make sure to stay cautious. It's where the Alpha and Atiba is. Now, get ready. I'll be supporting with the drone. So this must be Ador 7. Yes. This was the final battlefield of civilization. It was also known as a truly colossal city. Something is falling from the sky. A strange sensation. This must be Earth's rain. We can admire the scenery later. We have a job to do here. The terrain data's changed recently.
Falling debris. Be careful, Lee. Something is coming. The contradiction is coming. They're coming. All right. Area is clear. The legion that was killed in the final war. There's an encrypted code in the menu. That's a security code, a type of entry permit. Try entering the code. City's unstable terrain. You'll get used to it soon. City's unstable terrain. You'll get used to it soon. like this. Hey, the camp's over here.
Why not rest for a minute? Resting is part of any mission. Rapids below. If you fall, it's over.
other cities in a similar state. In my comparison, this city is looking pretty good. After the colony extinction, most places were nothing but dust. Huh? Wait, there's a fusion cell. Let's open the car's hood. Intact. Fusion cell? It's a high energy compression battery. Thanks to that, Earth's night isn't dark yet. Oh, it's the previous generation of the Infinity Cell. Be sure to keep that. It's very valuable.
Traces of markers left behind by the Legion.
The memory stick still has the security code registered. It also has record of a message log. Scan complete. You have to cross here. Do you see the ladder behind me?
We have to go through this building. Try putting the fusion cell you have here. Looks like this used to be a library. Are these boxes displayed on the wall storage devices? Sort of. They can only store up to one megabyte of data. What a waste of resources. Quite deep. It's going to be difficult to pass. 
We'll have to go across, past the parking tower. Supply camp? In a place like this? Supply camp? What's that? It's a depot. Set up by the airborne squad who came here before. Hmm. Looks like it's been abandoned for a long time. How come they set up a camp in a corner like this? Well, the supply camp also serves as an important base. Is this parking lot important? It could also mean that this place is very dangerous. Then I guess this place could be useful for us. You know, this is pretty much what I've been talking about regarding a pre-orders on the new games. You know, majority of developers out there and publishers, they would rather just give you a trailer or a trailer gameplay or have you watch someone else play it um, instead of giving you a demo. The best way to get somebody convinced whether or not they should buy or pre-order your game it's by giving them a demo i mean this is the lesson that needs to be learned man you know just give give release the demo that's all you gotta do you don't even, listen you don't even have to put a put a trailer out there you can save money on trailers you can save money on uh, a campaign you can save money on on you know um Promoting the game and all that. You know how you promote your game? Release the demo. This is how you do it. Like, this is how you do it. This is the lesson that needs to be learned. Don't 
make 45 minute video telling me about your game and the making of it and all this other stuff um release the demo this is the lesson that needs to be learned from other developers if you think that you got something great on your hands if you think you got a great game with combat and graphics and a good storyline and, and great character development release the demo release the demo that's all i wanted to say Yesterday, thank you for saving me. It's nothing really. Though I have used up almost all of the exospine materials that I collected over the years. Oh. It's all right. But now means we can help each other. can track down the Alpha Nativa together. And, well, I'd have trouble making it out here by myself anyway. If you can locate the Hall of Records, you'll have done more than enough. Listen, don't worry. I promise, I'll make sure to repay you.
not an ordinary enemy. Adam, get back!
can see the space center over there. This is the turret's motion center. What do we do now? The drone is different. Yes, this is no longer the drone you knew. Adam, are you listening to me? Something serious seems to have happened. I have to return to Zion. Oh my goodness. It's full of plants and little birds. Well, <clears throat> this is how you sell the game. <laughs> By releasing a demo. I mean, hopefully this is a lesson learned. Lesson learned for other developers. You know, instead of just putting out the videos of making of and behind the scenes and uh, having other people play it and then giving the game to, uh, you know, YouTube influencers, the best way to get your game to get a lot of attention and to uh, have people get excited to purchase it or pre-order it, it's by giving them a demo. Demo is the key word, man. You know, it's how it used to be back in the days, you know. Uh, I remember back in um, mid-90s, you know, 97, uh, 96, 97, um, a PlayStation Magazine would release a demo, a demo disc. And on that demo disc, you know, you would try certain games. And that would give you the idea whether or not you want to purchase them, go to EB store and pre-order them, right? Uh, Electronic Boutique back then. You know what I mean? Those, those were the days, right? You purchase a magazine and there's the demo disc. Or you uh, purchase a game and there's a demo in there. I remember when I got Zone of the Enders in 2001 zone of the enders uh video game on a playstation 2 there was a demo disc for metal gear solid 2 metal gear sons of liberty and um i remember trying it out before i start playing zone of the enders by the way Z zone of the enders very underrated game freaking awesome freaking 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 awesome if you never played zone of the enders freaking awesome um, Hideo Kojima was a producer on there, I think. So, um, those were the days. You have a demo and you try it out uh, before you buy it. You know what I mean? Or you go to the electronic boutique. You go to the electronic boutique uh, and you get to try the game uh, on a... Uh, like a, a station demo, right? They have a station demo with the monitors and the console, and you get to try it before you buy it. Uh, same thing goes with a Dreamcast, Dreamcast magazine, you know, all that. Um, you get to try out uh, the games before they come out. Uh, demo is the key. So now you have a demo way ahead of, uh, what, 
this game, like two weeks ahead of the release. That will give you a pretty good idea whether or not you want to pre, pre, uh, pre-purchase this, get the digital deluxe edition. Now you have a pretty good idea what this game is about. Yeah, this is a hard game, uh, but it's not Elden Ring. You know, Elden Ring, it's different, you know. That is the, the creme de la creme, right? Uh, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, that's the la creme de la creme of hard games. This is like, okay, there are difficulties. So you can change the difficulty, right? Uh, if you really want to test yourself, well, then go to the standard and see how you do it, how, how well you do it there. Or if you want to go super hard and then go right at it. And I love, see, this is what I was telling um, my friend Cameron yesterday. I love options. I like when a developer gives you the options, right? And I like having options in video games. In Dragon's Dogma 2, you don't have much options. You get what you get. And what you get, it's really not that good. Uh, So that's the major difference between Dragon's Dogma. This is the reason why people are really not... um, getting into Dragon's Dogma 2. I know there's some Dragon's Dogma 2 fanboys. There's always going to be fanboys, no matter what. Okay, that's just given. Um, But I'm simply saying is, Dragon's Dogma 2, it's not giving you much options. And and it's really almost unbelievable that that Dragon's Dogma 2 was created by Capcom. I'm almost like like turning my head like, how is it even possible? (laughs) You know, um, so Stellar Blade, hundred percent, man. I'm gonna get this. Stellar Blade, hundred percent. I'm getting this. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, I'm gonna definitely get this game. Um, so I just want to double check to see if Stellar Blade it's a exclusive to PlayStation. Yeah, it's exclusive to PlayStation. Uh, PlayStation 5. It's... uh, I'm just looking at the Wikipedia right now. It's an upcoming action-adventure game developed by Shift Up and published by Sony. Well, there you have it. You know, uh, who was it? Who was the last night? Overexposure was complaining. Where's the uh, new IPs? Well, there you have it. Uh, Overexposure. There you have it, brother. You ask for it, you got it. You wish for it, you got it. There's, there you go. You got two new IPs. Rise of the Ronin and Stellar Blade. And this is all within first four months of 2024. Not to mention Hell Divers 2. Hell Divers 2. So that's three exclusives. Three exclusives in just four months of 2024 what has xbox produced in in first four months what has xbox produced in first four months i know (laughs) i know that's how sad it is that's how Sad it is. Indiana Jones, you know what? Bethesda, I'm not really impressed by you, Bethesda. Especially, I'm not impressed by Todd Howard, you know, with uh, uh, Starfield. Uh, uh. All right, uh, Todd Howard, why don't you release a demo to uh, Game Pass Ultimate subscribers? Well, release a demo. Let us try... Uh, Indiana Jones. Let, let's see how far you guys are in development. Let's see. Let, let's check it out. Let's try it. If you think you have something super great 
Todd Howard and super uh, substantially awesome with Indiana Jones? Well, let us try it. I'm not saying give us the spoilers, but give us a little taste for like maybe 45 minutes of a demo. You know, it doesn't even have to be an hour, an hour and a half, or two hours. Just give us like a 45 minutes little taste of a demo. Let's see what you got going on in there. But I can tell you already that I, I don't feel that Indiana Jones is going to be successful. That's because it's a first-person game. If you look at Indiana Jones' previous games from Lucas, Lucas Arts, even in the original Xbox, it's always been a third-person game. It's always been a third-person game. But because it's Bethesda and Todd Howard has this fetish for first-person games, uh, it's always, always, always um, first-person. Now, if you're going to do um, Indiana Jones in VR, then I totally get it. I totally understand. Right. If you're going to do Indiana Jones in VR, virtual reality, then I totally get it why you want to do it in first person. Okay. Everybody would understand that. No one would complain. Uh, but, dude, you're making a non VR game and you're making Indiana Jones game in the first person. So, I, I, my, my hopes for Indiana Jones, I'm, I'm sorry, all my Xbox friends out there, my, my hopes for Indiana Jones are not that great. <laughs> yes, I know I made a video. I was like, you know, but that's because I didn't know. I misunderstood. When, when I made, after I made that video, after I published that video about Indiana Jones, I didn't know that um, it was going to be a first person. I thought you have a choice between a third person and a first person. I swear to God, I thought that you had a choice. I was like, well, that's cool. They're giving you a choice between a third person and a first person. But then later on, I went back to the making of video and they said, no, it's only, uh, I missed, somehow I missed on it. It's only on a, uh, a first person mode, even though there's some third person cutscenes or when you, when you may be climbing up a ladder, there's a little bit of a third person, briefly third person, uh, where you can see Harrison Ford, right? But other than that, it's going to be a first person. Uh, and you don't have a choice. You can't switch between a third person and a first person. And when I made that video, I didn't know that. I, I thought you have a choice. So I was like, okay, so there's a choice. So that's good. And every game should have a choice. You should have a choice of accessibility. How do you want to play this game? This should be like a basic necessity standard in every game. And I don't understand why developers are having difficult time, you know. Uh, it's almost like they live in a bubble. Like they're so disconnected from the gaming world. Like how could you not know what gamers want and what gamers don't want? Like how could you not know, dude? With all of these YouTube videos and Twitch and Kick.com and so many social media outlets out there, how could you not know the, the feedback? The feedback is there from Twitter, Reddit, you name it. There's an enormous amount of feedback, right? So how could you not know? So, I don't know. So what Xbox has? Hellblade 2, it's like the only thing. Honestly, if, if you want my honest, if you want my honest answer, Hellblade 2, like it's the only, the only game that Xbox, you know, might see some excitement. But we don't know when's that coming out. They've been delaying that game, pushing that game. I don't even know. Uh, we haven't seen a demo. No one has played it. So, and look, I have Xbox. I showed you guys. I have Project Scorpio. I got tons of Xboxes. I bought the original one in 2001, November 15th. Listen, and I bought that while I was playing Metal Gear Solid 2 on the PlayStation 2 in November 15th. Uh, 2001 right 
And there was Halo. There was Project Gotham Racing, but Halo Combat Involved was the one game that really caught my caught my eye. And the original Xbox was good. No one's going to say that the original Xbox was not good. <laughs> I will never say that. No one's going to say that the Xbox 360 was not good. Original Xbox and Xbox 360, these are the only two consoles that the Microsoft has produced that really brought something as a competition to Sony. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and Nintendo. But there was a downfall here. In, in 2013, with this whole Kinect thing, uh, always online, uh, use your hands and use your voice and to, to activate your console, blah, 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 navigate with your hands, you know, motion tracking. It all started there. That's where the downfall started in 2013, you know. Um, PlayStation, man, in the past 27 years, just look at their resume. I don't, I don't even have to uh, go through every single one of them. Just look at their resume. And you look at their resume, they can't even hold a, 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 a glass of water to Sony. So Sony is pretty much not in competition with anybody. I'm just going to say it flat out. Sony right now, it's not in competition with anyone. They're like, they're just sailing smooth. The only competitor that they could really have would be if a Sega decided to do another console. Like if Sega got all of their licenses of all of their games and Sega started going back to Dreamcast 2 and they started bringing out all these new IPs, right? Brand new games. That could be a problem. That would be like the only like true competitor. I'd be like, okay, Sony would have to like, you know, truly uh, keep an eye on that. <laughs> But Microsoft, no. Well, there you have it. I mean, you know, it's funny because me and Exposure, we were talking about this, and me and Cameron and Exposure were talking about this, and Exposure was saying, well, where's the new IPs? Well, there you have it, brother. There you have it. And this is just warming up. You already got, you know, two IPs. You got Stellar Blade and uh, Rise of the Ronin. Two Stellar... IPs um, just in a shy of four months of 2024 just shy of four months four months of 2024 and uh, there you go three exclusives in four months of 2024 three exclusives already already in the four months of this year three exclusives not to mention Wolverine and other games that are coming out um, you know what I mean PlayStation it's sitting pretty man uh, and there's a new firmware update should be coming out uh, I think Sony wants to push that firmware update for uh, PlayStation VR 2 for PC use that's going to be a, a game changer as well they're gonna push the uh, the firmware update. Digital Foundry already got the scoop. They already got the uh, the you know inside scoop about that. Uh, so the firmware update's coming in for uh, PC use on the VR. That's gonna be a huge benefit for PlayStation VR to to be able to utilize the Steam VR and other VR games on PC. You know, with a beautiful headset that it is, with a beautiful screen. Uh, and I'm telling you, that PlayStation VR 2 is going to be selling out, so you better grab one while you can. Once they roll that firmware update, I'm telling you. Uh, so what else? And then you got PlayStation Portal. Uh, I, I don't personally have it, but I heard a lot of great things about PlayStation Portal. PlayStation Portal, it's, it's, it's selling out like hotcakes. It's just selling out super fast, super, super easily fast. Um... People are buying it. People are doing all sorts of things with it. Um, people love it. It's great. It's, it's another success for Sony. Um, and then you got PlayStation 5 Pro coming out just in time for Grand Theft Auto 6. You know, we can go on and on and on. And again, I'm not sitting here like trying to like sell you 
to, to sell myself to you as some kind of a Sony fanboy, even though I qualify with all the Sony products that I have. I, I easily overqualify. Uh, I still have my PlayStation 3 fat. And why is that a big deal? Well, that means that I got all of the PlayStations. On my PlayStation 3 fat, I can play PlayStation 1 games, PlayStation 2 games, PlayStation 3 games, and on my PlayStation 4 Pro, I can play all my PlayStation 4 games, including PlayStation VR 1 games. And of course, my PlayStation 5, I have three of them, including the slim version. So yeah, I guess you could say I overqualify to, to, to be a Sony fanboy. But I choose not to call myself a Sony fanboy because I just don't like labeling myself as one. I'm a gamer. I want to play games. Whoever has the best games, that's where I'm going to go. I don't care if it's on Steam. I don't care if it's on whatever. Whoever, whoever has the best games, I go there. If Dreamcast comes out with freaking amazing new IPs and new games, well, Dreamcast, welcome back. Let's play. Right? So that's the way I look at uh, gaming. And I've always been like that, you know. This is what people don't seem to understand about me. They all have their ideas about me, and that's okay. You can assume this, you can assume that, you can have all kinds of opinions. That is your human nature to do that. I'm not blaming you for that. But man, if you look at my 8,000 videos, if you go through my channel righteously, uh, you're going to say, holy shit, this guy loves video games. This guy has really uh, played every single console, PC, every single game out there there is. This guy has played variety of stuff, man. Variety, you know. So, but we have to be, listen, the reason I'm telling you this, it's not to shit on Xbox. I'm telling you this because uh, these are the facts. I want Xbox to be successful. I do. Just like I wanted Google Stadia to be successful. I don't want to see, you know, anyone fail. I don't want to see companies fail or just become some whatever um, service, uh, a niche, a niche service type uh, company. Uh, I want, I want to, I want to see people succeed, man. I want to see companies succeed. I, I want to see success. I don't like I don't like seeing failures. That doesn't make me happy. I mean, it's not like I'm like, oh shit, oh they failed. Let's celebrate, right? It's not like I'm not like that. It's not my mindset. But what I'm simply saying is, um, <laughs> Xbox had many missed opportunities. And if you look at Phil Spencer, all he does is just pointing blame somewhere else. But he never looks at himself and say, hey, maybe it's me. Maybe I shouldn't have made these uh, decisions. Maybe we should have um, give Xbox owners what they want. Give them the exclusives. Get them out as quick as possible. Put money into those studios. Give them the resources that they need with all the money that we have. And, and, and with the billions of dollars that the Microsoft has, it's beyond me why they couldn't get the resources. They could have hired this one, Shift Up, to do this game for Xbox. They could have hired Team Ninja. They could have hired Square Enix. They could have hired Capcom to do something exclusive. They could have... Dude, they, they, there's so much they could have done. They could have hired CD Projekt Red to do something for Xbox exclusive like a new IP or something. They could have do they could have done so much. You know. Um but instead they would rather buy they think if they buy out the studios, if they buy out the publishers that somehow that's going to change things. They think having quantity of games on your Game Pass service is going to help your business grow. No. Uh that's like Netflix versus Amazon. Well, guess what? And Netflix and Amazon, they're both great services. I mean, Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime has a bunch of movies and, and, and TV shows I want to watch. So does the Netflix. Uh, people are always going to have both. 
Why? Because they want to have the best of both, or be, the best of the both worlds, right? So they want, they don't want to miss out, right? And I have a feeling that the the Xbox is going in that direction of just being a service, it's just being a, like a service. That's all. All right, so Stellar Blade. Of course, I'm gonna purchase this. I mean, not right now because I'm hurting for money, but I definitely will purchase it. You know, uh, I still have Rise of the Ronin, man. I got Banishers to play. Uh, I thought about maybe revisiting Max Payne 3 because it's on sale for like $6. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever... Uh, I'm sure you did. Uh, Max Payne 3 is an amazing game. Uh, if you never played Max Payne 3, it's, uh, it's, it's a really... Um, the game uh, really resonates to me um, because of um, the story and the character. Uh, and uh, it just hits all the right keynotes. To me, uh, Max Payne 3 hits all the, the right keynotes. You know, you know that, that phrase, the revenge, it's a dish best served cold, right? All these different phrases. has a little bit of that, like um, Tony Scott type of vibe in a in a video game um when you when when the game it's going through the character him being depressed and him trying to find the reasoning uh to why he even exists and what's his purpose you know and then finally he finds the purpose you know uh and the purpose to him was the revenge it's just the revenge happens to be in the brazil right where he was and something happens there and then he goes on this you know revenge spree um but uh, it's a really great uh, great game man max Payne 3 it's such an underrated game um it's almost like a cult classic right now especially you know since the, the voice actor passed away and i thought about maybe honoring him uh and doing the the live stream without me being in it me talking i thought about just doing a live stream with uh turning the volume up and you guys watch me play it and enjoy the enjoy the max Payne 3 uh with all the graphics settings maxed out you know so i don't know i might do that tonight we'll see but as far as the stellar blade um yeah uh this is easily uh to me personally i would uh recommend this there's a boss challenge that has been unlocked. Select the boss challenge in the main menu in order to experience a boss fight with a wider variety of skills. A boss challenge. So Stellar Blade... Um, Stellar Blade... Uh, <clears throat> it's definitely uh, something I'm gonna purchase. And I have a feeling my friend Cameron uh, will purchase it. You know, I have a feeling overexposure will purchase it. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to purchase this uh, on uh, on the PlayStation. Um, I don't know, is there anything else to say? I don't know. What Cammy, I agree, man. Uh, the way the way things are going, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if Hellblade 2 goes to uh, the place. To so then, think about it. Th uh, think about this. 
Um, check this out for a minute. You won't have any reason to purchase an Xbox if all of these games are going to be available on a PlayStation 5, including PlayStation 5 exclusives, all the AAA PlayStation 5 exclusives and all the PlayStation 5 exclusive sequels, successful sequels. Um, dude, no one's going to bother. I mean, it's just people are going to start switching from Xbox. They're going to cancel their Xbox membership. Uh, of Game Pass and they're gonna move to PlayStation Plus. Oh, I mean premium, right? They're gonna move from uh, Game Pass Ultimate, they're gonna cancel Game Pass Ultimate and they're gonna switch to PlayStation Plus premium. They're gonna say, well, why, why, why even bother, right? Why, why even bother with uh, Xbox Game Pass, where I can have all of that stuff on the PlayStation Plus Premium and, and enjoy the, the best of the both worlds on a one console. Red Fail Starfield. I do, Brendan. I do, guys. Um, Sorry guys, today I had a cranky day. I wasn't feeling good, man. You guys know I don't talk about my private life. I don't talk about the shit I go through. Because, uh, you know, I'm not that type of guy. You know, I, I keep my private life in here. Uh, and I sure as hell am not going to share it with people. But uh, just um, having one of those cranky, shifty moods kind of days, you know. <clears throat> Let's just put it that way. One of those, like, uh, Max pain kind of fucking days, you know. I'm not saying that I'm angry or I'm, you know, I'm just like, uh, just like having one of those max pain fucking days, you know, you know. But anyway, um, I'm glad you guys are here. And another thing I want to say before I go eat my, I got to make some tuna sandwich or something, I don't know, with some beans, put it together and eat it, put some salad, you know, um, what I was going to say, oh yeah, I wanted to mention, which I already have mentioned this, um, demo, demo, release the demo, this is the best way to get people excited, developers, Learn your lesson and learn it well, developers and publishers. You can save money on a campaign and advertisements. Just release a demo. Release a demo. And you're saving money at the same time. And you're going to be successful because if you got something good at your hand with the game that you're making, uh, you'll get a strong feedback if you got something really bad in your hand Well, guess what then you get a negative feedback and then you can delay the game and say we're gonna delay the game Due to negative feedback so we can work on the feedback that we got from people playing the demo This is why the demo it's essential. It's essential necessity for your game to be successful release a demo and, and this is a great example shift up stellar blade great example last year square enix with final fantasy 16 great example with final fantasy 16 release a demo uh that's how you make people purchase your game it's the demo demo is the holy grail and that that's what i really wanted to emphasize on is the demo demo is the key to success of your game whether your game is successful or it fails it'll be dependent on the demo that you release and the demo is only gonna help you it's not gonna hurt you demo can help you so you can fix certain things on that Titanic ship before it hits the iceberg so you can turn it turn that ship around 
and avoid the icebergs. Uh, that's what demo is. Hopefully, developers will learn this. Hopefully, they'll learn this. Because if, if developers don't learn this, they're going to keep repeating the same mistakes. And that's really all I want to say about that. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing a party tonight. I'll probably, most likely, I'll do a Max Payne uh, walkthrough. Uh, and have you guys watch the Max Payne 3. Um, so, uh, maybe another day. Maybe, uh, we'll see. Maybe Sunday, maybe Monday, maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Because I don't know, man. Like, depends on how I feel. You know? Depends on uh, what my mood is, man, honestly. It really depends. You know? And I don't want to be uh, like a negative nanny. I would never do a, a, you know, a live stream or a conversation with somebody if I'm not, not feeling 100%. You know what I mean? But uh, we'll see. You know? <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank you, Cameron, for understanding. Thank you, guys, for understanding. Um, so yeah, that's it. Stellar Blade, two thumbs up. I give it a two thumbs up. Uh, love it. This is easily a purchase. Another great hit for Sony. Another successful. Look at the graphics, man. Look, look at the. You don't see Xbox producing something like this, ever, um, on this kind of level, with all the 12 teraflops that they have. Um, so, two thumbs up. Shift up. Two thumbs up. Play the demo. Don't just take my word for it. Play the demo. Uh, and uh, see it for yourself. You don't have to listen to this guy. You don't have to listen to this one. So. Alright guys, so uh, I might play uh, Max Payne 3 later on for you guys. There won't be any like commentary. It's just going to be uh, a Max Payne 3 uh, live stream for you guys to watch. And check out the game if you never played it. Uh, it's going to be one of those uh, Saturday night Max Payne 3, it's a, it's a, like, equalizer slash John Wick slash, you know, Man on Fire put together. It's, a, it's one of those movies, I mean, one of those games that's just uh, pretty darn, uh, pretty darn good. And also, uh, I felt like honoring the, uh, the voice actor who passed away uh, recently. Uh, he was the... Uh, the guy, he looks like him, because that's him. The guy you see in the Max Payne 3, that's the guy. That's how he looks like. Uh, that's the voiceover actor. Uh, he passed away. Not sure what it was, cancer or, or something like that. Uh, he passed away. Alright guys, so I'm going to go eat my uh, dinner. And uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, love you all. Be good. Take care. See you later. Thank you.